Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Orient Veterans Memorial Veterans Day Ceremony here at Kensington Church. We're going to start off ceremonially by inviting Mr. L uh, Petty up to the podium to post the colors. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ladies and gentlemen, we ask that you please remain standing, if you are able, for our national anthem. I'd like to thank everybody for showing up tonight in this beautiful weather we're having out there. Such a beautiful day this morning up at Great Lakes, and then we have this tonight, so it's only kind of fitting. So let's please uncover. Heavenly Father, today we gather together to honor the brave women and men who have served our great country with dignity, honor, and courage. We seek to recognize our veterans who have shown a willingness to serve in difficult and often dangerous moments. 
whether they were drafted or enlisted. As we gather here today, we pray that a spirit of peace would come over all the nations of the world so that the young men and women would no longer be called away from home and friends to be put in harm's way. We look forward to the fulfillment of the prophet's words who spoke of a day when nations shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks, when nations shall not rise up against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. It is in the hope that peace will reign on earth that we give thanks for willingness to serve, not only in time of war, but also in peace. We not only honor those who served in the military, but we also give thanks and honor for the families, especially spouses and children who wait with bated breath for news of their loved ones, who risk their lives in places far away from home. We who love this country ask that you would not let us forget those who served and those who continue to serve. May their example encourage us in our service to community, country, and the world, so that together we may pursue the, the common of good of all creation here and abroad. For this we pray. Amen. Cover. Please be seated. All right, good evening, everybody. My name is Lee Smith. For those of you who don't know me, that is my real name. I do have ID to prove it. Um, I get the pleasure of having some opening remarks. And as some of you who may know me um, know that I'm a little shy when it comes to public speaking, so I promise this will only take about 38 minutes. <laughs> Buckle up, kids. We're going to get a lot of different lessons this evening about history behind Veterans Day and some of the things that bind this day to veterans. Um, and I think that's something that we talk about quite frequently, honestly. So I want to turn the table a little bit right here at the beginning and just tell you a little bit about what Veterans Day means to Lee Smith, what it means to me. For those who fought for it, freedom has a flavor the protected will never know. This is something that I read quite frequently as it's on a bumper sticker in my garage in my toolbox. It's just one of those quotes that I really like. And I'll be honest with you, I don't remember who it's from. However, it rings true. Those of us who have served, those of us who have had spouses, fathers, brothers, sisters, family members who have served, know a different flavor of freedom than those who have not. And I think that's something that is lost when it comes to these kinds of ceremonies. Um, we need to pay honor to those who have fallen before us, always. But there's nothing wrong with looking at one another across the aisle from each other, sitting next to each other, and having a little fun and remembering that not every day in the military was a rough day. Us sailors will sit around and tell stories, sea stories, along with the Coast Guardsmen, about travels around the world. Marines will tell stories that nobody else will understand because that's just the language they're speaking. Right? There it is. <laughs> the Army will tell their stories of going over hill, over dale, and the Air Force guys will tell you about that time their boots got dirty. I said what I meant. <laughs> Don't forget that there's a whole nother side to this. We are a brotherhood, a sisterhood, a family. As long as we keep sight in that, our patriots will be here forever. And with that, I would like to bring up Kathy Eschenberg and Susan Meyer from the Daughters of the American Revolution. As they come up, we're gonna show a brief video. Um, the, um, uh, on the history of the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. Enjoy.
Robert Foley, Lieutenant General, U.S. Army, retired. When I was the Commanding General of the U.S. Army Military District of Washington, I was the host for 109 wreath-laying ceremonies at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier in Arlington National Cemetery. Six of those ceremonies were with the President of the United States on Memorial Day and Veterans Day, and 103 were with foreign heads of state, ministers of defense, or chiefs of their respective defense forces. In addition, 30 of the ceremonies were with delegations from Eastern European nations and former Soviet socialist republics, many who were coming to America for the first time. Each ceremony began with the national anthems of the United States and the visiting nation, followed by the wreath laying and a bugle playing taps. I concluded the ceremony with a brief presentation on the history of the tomb interments. I'm convinced that the foreign dignitaries came away from their visit with two distinct impressions. First, America's values were ably represented by the tomb sentinels who are on guard 24 hours a day, seven days a week in honor of American citizens who lost their identity while making the ultimate sacrifice for their country. Secondly, the 150 members of the Joint Service Honor Guard create a powerful image of the U.S. Armed Forces with their rifle and fixed bayonet precision drill. One loud crack was heard when the soldiers, Marines, sailors, airmen, and Coast Guardsmen clicked their heels in unison at the command of attention, and one loud slap as they grabbed their rifles at the command of present arms. The highest accolade I heard during my tenure came from the delegate of an Eastern European nation who said to his colleague, as they were departing from the tomb, I think we should stick with these guys. Good evening. My name is Katherine Eschenberg, and I am the regent of John Crawford Chapter of the Daughters of the American Revolution. We are here tonight to assist the Veterans Memorial Board, American Legion Post 344, community leaders, and students of Lake Orion Elementary School in honoring our veterans for all the sacrifices they have made of their time, their treasures, and human cost. A grateful nation thanks you for your service. The ladies of John Crawford chapter of the DAR come from many communities. Represented tonight are ladies from Almont, Dryden, Oxford, and Lake Orion. The National Society of the Daughters of the American Revolution is honored to be partnering, partnering with the Society of the Honor Guard of the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier to observe this centennial of the tomb today on the 11th month, the 11th day of November 11, 2021. The Tomb of the Unknown Soldier was established in 1921 as a final resting place for unknown soldiers from World War I. Later remains were added from subsequent wars to represent all missing and unknown service members who made the ultimate sacrifice for our freedoms. The National Society of the DAR has been proud to place a wreath upon the memorial annually since 1921. The National Society of the Daughters of the American Revolution was founded in 1890 and is headquartered in Washington, D.C. The national headquarters are a full city block and it is the largest piece of real estate owned 
totally by women in Washington, D.C. Our organization is dedicated to promoting patriotism, preserving American history, and securing America's future through the education of our children. Each member can trace their lineage from themselves to a patriot who gave service in the American Revolution, either in the military or through community service to support the troops. John Crawford Chapter of the DAR was organized in February of 1918 in Oxford, Michigan, with 20 members, six of which traced their lineage from the American patriot John Crawford, who was in the third company of the Orange County, New York militia. We bring greetings tonight to pay our respects to all the servicemen and women from all branches of the military. We congratulate those who served in the Vietnam conflict, as this is your 50th anniversary too. We invite all servicemen, all service personnel, at the close of this ceremony to seek our members out in the gathering space and be honored with a commemorative pin. The ladies of John Crawford Chapter accept a sense of duty and obligation to commemorate this centennial with you tonight and wish for all to live their most perfect life in our great country. God bless America. May the ladies of John Crawford please come to the stage. The John Crawford Chapter stands here tonight to present this plaque for installation at the grounds of the Orion Veterans Memorial. We present these roses and comments regarding the tomb, its origins, and its duties today. The single act of using a white rose will make known that this moment, whether public or private, is one where America comes together in performing the sacred duty to never forget or forsake those millions of Americans that served and sacrificed so that we may live free. Presenting the first rose, Sarah from Lake Orion on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month in 2021. Americans will pause to recognize those who have sacrificed and those who will sacrifice in the future in defense of America's freedom and democracy. The Tomb of the Unknown Soldier was established in 1921 as the final resting place for an unknown soldier from World War I Later remains were added from subsequent wars to now represent all missing and unknown service members who made the ultimate sacrifice for our freedoms. The second rose is presented by Suzanne from Oxford. The tomb of the unknown soldier at Arlington National Cemetery stands atop a hill overlooking Washington, D.C. On March 4, 2021, Congress approved the burial of an unidentified American soldier from World War I in the plaza of the Memorial Amphitheater. The third rose is presented by Mary from Lake Orion. 
The white marble sarcophagus has a flat-faced form and is relieved at the corners and along the sides by neoclassic pilasters or columns set into the surface. Sculpted into the east panel, which faces Washington, D.C., are three Greek figures representing peace, victory, and valor. The six wreaths, sculpted three on each side, represent the six major campaigns of World War I. Inscribed on the back of the tomb are the words, here rests in honored glory an American soldier known but to God. The fourth rose is presented by Sue from Oxford. We have a lot of Sues. <laughs> West of the World War I unknown are the crypts of the unknowns from World War II, Korea, and Vietnam. These three graves are marked with white marble slabs flush with the plaza. The fifth rose is presented by Debbie from Oxford. On Memorial Day, 1921, four unknowns were exhumed from four World War I American cemeteries in France. United States Sergeant Edward F. Younger, who was wounded in combat, highly decorated for valor, and receiving the Distinguished Service Medal in the Great War, the War to End All Wars, selected the unknown soldier of World War I from four identical caskets at the City Hall at Chalons-sur-Marne, France, October 24, 1921. The chosen soldier was transported to the United States aboard the USS Olympia. Those remaining were interred in the Meuse Argonne Cemetery, France. The unknown soldier lay in state in the capital rotunda from his arrival in the United States until Armistice Day, 1921. On November 11th, President Warren G. Harding officiated at the internment ceremonies at the Memorial Amphitheater at Arlington National Cemetery. The sixth rose is presented by Stephanie from Lake Orion. On August 3rd, 1951, President Dwight D. Eisenhower signed a bill to select and pay tribute to the unknowns of World War II and Korea. The selection ceremonies and interment of these unknowns took place in 1958. Two unknowns, one from the European theater and one from the Pacific theater, were placed in identical caskets and taken aboard the USS Canberra. Navy hospital man, first class, William Charette, then the Navy's only active duty Medal of Honor recipient, selected the unknown soldier of World War II. The remaining casket received a solemn burial at sea. The seventh rose is presented by Judy from Attica. Four unknowns who died in the Korean War were disinterred from the National Cemetery of the Pacific in Hawaii. Army Master Sergeant Ned Lyle made the final selection. Both caskets, the casket of the unknown from World War II and Korea, arrived in Washington May 28, 1958 where they lay in the Capitol Rotunda until May 30th. That morning, they were carried on caissons to Arlington National Cemetery. President Eisenhower awarded each the Medal of Honor, and the unknowns were interred in the plaza beside their World War I comrade. 
The eighth rose is presented by Llewellyn from Almont. The unknown service member from the Vietnam War was designated by Medal of Honor recipient United States Marine Corps Sergeant Major Alan J. Kellogg, Jr. during a ceremony at Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, May 17, 1984. The remains were sent to Traverse Air Force Base, California, May The Vietnam unknown arrived at Andrews Air Force Base, Maryland, the next day, and then was transported to the capital. An Army caisson carried the Vietnam unknown from the capital to the Memorial Amphitheater at Arlington National Cemetery on Memorial Day, May 28, 1984. President Reagan presided over the funeral and presented the Medal of Honor to the Vietnam Unknown. The ninth rose is presented by Cindy from Almont. The remains of the Vietnam Unknown were exhumed May 14, 1998. Based on DNA testing, Department of Defense scientists identified these remains as those of Air Force First Lieutenant Michael Joseph Blasey, who was shot down near An Lac, Vietnam in 1972. It has been determined that the crypt that contained the remains of the Vietnam unknown will remain vacant. The crypt cover has been replaced with one that has the inscription honoring and keeping the faith with America's missing servicemen, 1958 to 1975. Susan. The 10th row is presented by Susan from Lake Orion. The 3rd U.S. Infantry, traditionally known as the Old Guard, is the oldest active duty infantry unit in the Army, serving the nation since 1784. Since World War II, the Old Guard has served as the official honor, Army Honor Guard and escort to the President. In that capacity, 3rd Infantry soldiers are responsible for conducting military ceremonies at the White House, the Pentagon, national memorials, and elsewhere in the nation's capital. In addition, soldiers of the Old Guard maintain a 24-hour vigil at the Tomb of the Unknowns. And the 11th rose is presented by Mary from Bloomfield Hills. The mission of the Tomb Platoon is responsible for maintaining the highest standards and traditions of the United States Army and this nation, while keeping a constant vigil at this national shrine, and whose special duty is to prevent any desecration or disrespect directed toward the tomb. To become a Tomb Guard, an Old Guard soldier must volunteer by applying for appointment to the tomb through the sergeant of the guard. To be considered for an appointment, the soldier must be highly motivated and disciplined and possess a strong military bearing and soldierly appearance. Kathy? Tonight we would like to present a special plaque to the Memorial Garden of Lake Orion. Would Dr. Joe Mastro Mateo please come forward? John Crawford Chapter of the Daughters of the American Revolution would like to present this honor plaque for the memorial gardens, along with the statues and other monuments that are there, and the memorial bricks, and the tender 
loving garden that surrounds it. This will allow the memory of all the unknowns who have served the United States of America. I did want to take a moment just to read what it says on the plaque, because you might not be able to see it. Uh, it says, the tomb of the unknown soldier, never forget garden. This garden is a living tribute to all of America's veterans and their families. In silence and respect, this is a place to remember why millions of Americans have fought and died for our liberty and freedom. Here we renew our promise to fulfill America's sacred duty to never forget. Here we renew our mutual pledge to support them with our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. Thank you so much for giving us this opportunity to celebrate this anniversary centennial today, veterans. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the daughters of the American Revolution, let's give them a hand one more time, please. Thank you so much. This is beautiful. So, as is tradition, we have a song for you. And Brian Bernie is going to get up and sing it. No? Okay. So we have a service song. It's going to be up. This song is all of these service songs put together as one medley. And what we would ask is as your service song is played, please rise. By the end of this, every veteran should be standing, right? If you can.
All right, sailors, come on. So two things about that. One, there was a version of this that was 17 minutes long. <laughs> and two, you will notice how they save the best for last. <laughs> yep, we got one back here. So we would like to move on with, we're gonna have a wreath brought forward to commemorate and celebrate those who have served who are serving and who will serve. And this wreath will be brought up by Karen, <clears throat> excuse me, Karen Petty and Nancy Thee, Veterans Wives. Immediately following the wreath coming up, Carlos Perez will be playing taps for us. Please be seated. So before we move on to the closing of the ceremony, I would like to, A, go back to what I said at the beginning of the ceremony. Through this, you have learned a little bit about some of the traditions, some of the histories behind Veterans Day, behind the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. But again, don't forget to look at each other pick on each other, laugh at each other, and laugh with each other. Because that's all part of it too. I'd like to drink, bring Jim Mouse up for the Benedict. Well, for a brief thing in the Benedict. I'm sorry. What? Oh. Before I get to the benediction, I ran across something here that I know a lot of you have seen, heard, read. Uh, I found it in the internet so I know it's true. So if you can believe that. It states, for my non-military friends out there, this may or may not help you to understand those of us that served in the military. 
We are veterans. We left home as teenagers for unknown adventure. We loved our country enough to defend it and protect it with our own lives. We said goodbye to friends and family and everything we knew. We learned the basics and then we scattered in the wind to the far corners of the earth. We found new friends and new family. We became brothers and sisters regardless of color, race, or creed. We had plenty of good times and plenty of bad times. We didn't get enough sleep. We smoked and drank too much. We picked up both good and bad habits. We worked hard and we played harder. We didn't earn a good wage. We experienced the happiness of mail call and the sadness of missing important events. We didn't even know, we didn't know when or even if we were ever going to see home again. We grew up fast and yet somehow we never grew up at all. We fought for our freedom as well as the freedom of others. Some of us saw actual combat and some of us didn't. Some of us saw the world and some of us didn't. Some of us dealt with physical warfare. Most of us dealt with psychological warfare. We have seen and experienced and dealt with things that we can't fully describe or explain as not all of our sacrifices were physical. We participated in time-honored ceremonies and rituals with each other, strengthening our bonds and camaraderie. We counted on each other to get the job done and so sometimes to survive it at all. We have dealt with, dealt with victory and tragedy. We have celebrated and mourned. We lost a few along the way. When our adventure was over, some of us went back home, some of us started somewhere new, and some of us never came home at all. We have told amazing and hilarious stories of our exploits and adventures, some of them true. We share an unspoken bond with each other that most people don't experience and few will understand. We speak highly of our own branch of service and poke fun of the other branches. We know, however, that if needed, we will be there for our brothers and sisters and stand together as one in a heartbeat. Being a veteran is something that had to be earned and it can never be taken away. It has no monetary value, but at the same time, it is a priceless gift. People see a veteran and they thank them for their service. When we see each other, we give that little upward head nod or slight smile, knowing that we have shared and experienced things that most people have not. So for myself to the rest of the veterans out there, I commend and thank you for all that you have done and sacrificed for your country. Try to remember the good times and grow from the bad times. Share your stories. But most importantly, stand tall and proud, for you have earned a right to be called a veteran. Thank you. Have our benediction. If you can, please stand. Uncover. Heavenly Father, please watch over us as we leave this place with great appreciation of the lives honored here today. May we follow their example by committing ourselves to service to the community in which we live and beyond. May we receive the spirit of friendship that develops when people come together through public service 
including military service. May your spirit help us defeat every barrier that divides us from one another. Grant us wisdom as we pursue the vision of peace and justice for everyone who lives in this great nation and beyond. For this we pray. Amen. Cover. Honor Guard, retire the colors. All right, at ease. Ladies and gentlemen, before we go, I would like to take a moment to thank Kensington Church for letting us have this ceremony here, their gracious crew back here for audio and video. I can't thank you guys enough. You guys nailed it tonight. Um, and thank you for the hospitality, for the coffee and the snacks, and just hanging out with us tonight. Thank you so much. I'd like to thank the Daughters of the American Revolution for coming this evening. Thank you for a beautiful presentation. And the dozens of volunteers that helped make this happen. Thank you. As stated earlier, the Daughters of the American Revolution will be in the lobby um, to meet and greet and to pass out um, World War II and Korean War pins and Vietnam pins. Uh, lapel pins for veterans that are out there. Uh, please stop, talk to them, say hi, receive a pin, and we'll meet you all outside. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Yeah.